Hey there, I'm Josh, and today I'm gonna be just joshing around customizing Spider-Man. This is a project that I wanted to have done in time to put out with the release of the new movie. But I got pretty busy with the holidays and all, so here we are. This figure is actually from Spider-Man Far From Home, but it's the same suit that we see in the new movie. And this is a cheap figure that I'll be using for parts replacement. The first step is to cut away that ungodly Power FX arm. I hate how they keep putting these things on these figures. Once that was removed, I had to cut away part of his butt cheek as well and then to do a bit of cutting and shaping on the leg. You see, I'm going to be posing this figure into a specific stance, so I have to do some cutting and trimming here and there to achieve that. Then I had to cut some material away from the backs of both knees and on the ankles. Next, I got started on the hands. This is the hand of that symbiote suit Spider-Man figure. I first had to separate the fingers to allow some individual posing. To get them posed where I wanted them, I applied some heat using a lighter. I wanted the hand to be positioned in the iconic pose that Spider-Man uses to activate his web shooter. So after applying the heat, I held the fingers in position and secured them that way by cooling them super quickly. This was accomplished by flipping over a can of dusting air and spraying it right onto the hand. Once that was done, I cut it off and set it aside for use in a moment. Next was to cut away another part that I'll be borrowing to replace the arm of the figure. I did a dry fit to see how it would work. It looks pretty good. Now to attach the pieces. I drilled some holes in either end of the adjoining bits of both the wrist and the hand, and then the upper arm and the lower arm. I cut some bits of wire for attachment and then shoved the pieces together and glued them in place. I did the arm first and then repeated the same process with the hand. Next, I moved on to posing the legs. To accomplish this, I repeated the same trick of heating things up, bending it into place, and then cooling it super quickly. This method works pretty well for me, but I can't really recommend trying it yourself, at least without a word of caution. The first thing is that if you heat any type of plastic up in this manner, you're going to release some nasty fumes. And obviously, if you're not careful, you could burn yourself. And the other thing is, you could probably get tissue damage if you're not cautious enough and spray too much of this stuff on your hands. So if you want to try this method, just remember to be careful. And if you're a kid watching this, don't do anything without first getting help from a parent or grown-up. Once I got the figure posed, it was time to start adding clay. I focused mainly on the seams and spaces around all the joints, and obviously anywhere that I had previously cut away. The idea here is to make this figure look like a solid piece, since I'm essentially turning it into a statue. And obviously this is similar to what I've done with other figures in the past. And if you haven't seen those videos, be sure to check them out, you know, after this one. While I'm adding all the clay, I guess now would be a good time to talk a little bit about the new Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man No Way Home was officially released on December 17, 2021. It is the third standalone film for this iteration of Spider-Man, although I think it's actually six films now that he's appeared in. It's hard for me to really give my true opinion of this new film without delving too much into spoiler territory. What I can say is that it wasn't really the movie that I was expecting. And that's great, because I love to be surprised, and this movie was a nice surprise. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and immediately wanted to buy another ticket to watch it again. And even though the movie was over two and a half hours long, it didn't feel long at all. It's full of so many crowd-pleasing moments that, even though I'm not one to usually clap or cheer during a movie, I found myself involuntarily clapping several times, like an idiot and it had quite a few moments that were really heartfelt and emotional. Coincidentally, some dang bug kept flying in my eye at those moments too, just making me a little bit teary-eyed, stupid bug. The point is that I enjoyed it quite a bit, and I really look forward to watching it again. And while sure, you can find a few nits to pick here and there, like some people could say it has a bit too much fan service, guess what? I happen to be a fan, so I'm here for it. Regardless, I highly recommend seeing it for yourself. Now, back to the figure. What I'm doing here is adding a little bit of ribbing or piping or whatever you want to call that on the costume detail. 
What I didn't mention, since I was still talking about the movie, is that I smoothed out all of the clay using a wet cloth. And now, I'm just getting into the detail work on the suit. Speaking of the suit, this one isn't really my favorite. I'm not a big fan of the red and black color scheme. The details of the suit itself are fine, it's just that color scheme, I, I prefer the traditional red and blue. In fact, my favorite suit of this current iteration is probably the one he had in both Captain America Civil War and Spider-Man Homecoming. Or one of the ones that we see in the new movie, which again, I don't want to talk too much about because I don't want to spoil it. But honestly, I think my favorite Spider-Man suit from any movie ever is the one that he wore in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. You know, the one from a few years ago starring Andrew Garfield. Boy, I wish his Spider-Man could touch I really like the way that suit looked. It's like it just jumped right off the comic book page. Regardless, anyway, I'm doing this figure with this suit because it's pertinent to the new movie. And because I got it on discount a couple years ago and it's been sitting in storage waiting for me to work on it. What I'm doing here is using my wood burning iron with a hot knife attachment to cut some detail lines in the arm. Next, it was time to start adding all the webbing to the suit in the appropriate areas. First, I used a sharpie to trace on all the lines. Then, I used a wood carving chisel to cut them all. And with that, I made his back look a heck of a lot better than it did with that stupid Power FX thing. <laughs> I repeated the same process everywhere else I needed to, and then this figure was ready for paint. I applied several coats of gray primer. And even though I'm not showing it, between coats, I allowed the figure to dry thoroughly and then very lightly sanded it with some fine steel wool. I then applied several coats of flat black spray paint. Once the figure was dry, I removed sticky back that I had applied to the eyes to protect them. And next, it was time to start hand painting on all of the red. I did this very carefully, and since the paint wasn't covering as well as I was hoping, I had to do several coats in some spots. I started with his head and then moved on to the rest of the body. Mainly the front of the torso, and then the legs, and the arms, and the hands. Once I was done with the red, I moved on to the black to add all the details. There were some details on his feet, and the logo on his chest, but most of my time was spent on all the webbing. This was by far the most tedious part of this entire project. I tried to use some of that Tamiya panel liner stuff that I used before, but it didn't really work for this. So I had to get my finest tip paintbrush and add all the webbing by hand. And this part wasn't really that fun. One thing that I didn't film is that I actually went back over all the red and dry brushed it to help hide any of the blemishes that I got while painting the webbing. Speaking of dry brushing, I mixed up a little bit of silver, black, and gray and dry brushed on all of the black fabric areas of the costume. This was kind of meant to simulate the fact that this costume is mainly made of spandex, so I was trying to make it look like fabric, and I think I had varying degrees of success with that. If anything, it might have given it a little bit more depth. Next, I very carefully added some silver details to that logo on the chest. Painting the tiny legs was hard enough, but outlining the main body and the head of the spider was definitely harder, and it took a really steady hand. Once that was done, I flipped the figure over and painted the logo on the back. This one was much easier to paint. And with that, the figure was pretty much done, but I decided to add a little extra. Some webbing. Since I wanted this figure to look like he's in an action pose, I figured it'd be kind of cool to make it look like a freeze frame of him shooting webbing out of his wrist. So to accomplish that, I'm going to be using some scrap speaker wire. I stripped off all the insulation and then took several strands and secured them in the end of the drill and then twisted them together. And this is what I was left with. I repeated that process a couple times to make two more strands. Then I twisted two strands together in one direction and took the third strand and twisted it together in the opposite direction. I added some tight loops every couple inches as well. Now before you say, wow Josh, that's pretty creative, how'd you come up with that? I have to give credit where credit's due. I found a tutorial right here on YouTube, which I'll link below. I thought it was a cool idea and I figured it was worth a shot. And boy, am I glad I did it because it really turned out well. You'll see here in a moment. I gave the whole thing a really light coating of white spray paint. To be honest, I wanted it to look a little more translucent like it does in the movies. I figured since I really couldn't accomplish that, I'd make it look a little closer to like it does in the comic books. To attach it, I just drilled a very small hole in his wrist. And with that, 
This figure is done. I'm beyond thrilled with how this figure turned out. I think it looks really cool. Although it is definitely far from perfect, there are blemishes here and there all over it. But overall, I really like it. And I like how the webbing looks too. You know, as far as iconic Spider-Man poses go, this is definitely not one of the more extreme ones. I would have liked to have him hanging from like a light post or something, but I didn't really want to bite off more than I can chew here. So I figured I'd keep it relatively simple, and I'm glad I did. I'm pretty happy with how this figure turned out, and I've really come to enjoy customizing this series of figures. The Titan Hero series has a lot of nice detail to them, and just with a little bit of cutting and bending and some clay, you can turn it into something special. And I think that adding the webbing was a nice touch as well. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful in some way. And if you're new here, be sure to check out some of my other stuff that's going to pop up here in a moment. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.